okay after completing the ribosomes as well as the structure of tRNA let's move ahead with the mRNA mRNA is known as messenger RNA why it is known as messenger RNA because it contains message what message it contains it contains the message in the form of nitrogen basis as it is RNA it is also from 5 prime to 3 prime direction but it contains nitrogen bases and 3 3 nitrogen bases for example here 3 3 nitrogen bases they are called as codon each codon codes for an amino acid or they may code for start codon or stop codon okay each codon has a specific meaning that means in order to synthesize a protein every information is present where the protein has to start where the protein synthesis has to halt and what are the amino acids that are to be the part of the proteins every information is present in the mrna that is why it is called as messenger rna and it accounts for only two to four percent of the total rna total RNA very small number is present but it is actively synthesizing and it is degrading mRNA as you know that it is the single stranded and it is formed this mRNA is formed from the DNA from the DNA the specific genes are present a gene is transcribed to form the mRNA mRNA on translation it gives rise to protein or polypeptide chain this is the central dogma as you know and for the synthesis of any RNA, mRNA, tRNA as well as RNA, what is required? RNA polymerase is required and as I told you, it contains information for the synthesis of proteins. The information is in the form of codons. Codons are nothing but a three nitrogen bases, a triplet code, for example, CCC. It, it, it codes for the amino acid proline, AUG. It codes for an amino acid methionine. Likewise, GGG it codes for glycine amino acid so each codon is nothing but three nitrogen three adjacent nitrogen bases which code for an amino acid which code for the start signal or stop signal of the polypeptide chain this there are two types of mRNAs prokaryotic mRNA as well as eukaryotic mRNA and uh, this these mrnas whatever they may be prokaryotic and eukaryotic they are formed by the process of transcription in prokaryotes coupled transcription and translation takes place what is this coupled transcription and translation see this diagram this is dna where the rna is synthesizing this d from this dna it is undergoing the process of transcription and synthesizing, still synthesizing RNA. Still the transcription is going on. And here the 5 prime of the RNA is free, mRNA. This is mRNA to which the ribosome is attached. Blue color one is ribosome and it is synthesizing the protein, red color. It is synthesizing the polypeptide chain or protein. Here you can observe two processes which are going on simultaneously. What are they? One is the process of transcription which is happening and at the same time another process called as translation is also taking place. So here the protein synthesis is taking place as well as RNA synthesis is also taking place. This process which is where the both processes transcription as well as transcription or uh, translation are taking place is called as coupled transcription and translation why this happens means there are two reasons one is there is no nucleus which is present in the uh, prokaryotes nucleus is not present another reason is the post transcriptional modifications do not occur in case of the prokaryotic mrna because of these two reasons coupled transcription and translation is facilitated in case of prokaryotic mRNA but not in case of eukaryotes and the prokaryotic mRNA is also polycystronic poly means many cistron means coding regions that means if this is the mRNA prokaryotic mRNA 
after the process of translation after the process of translation we are going to get more than one polypeptide chain one two three or many but more than one polypeptide chain is synthesized after the process of translation that means this protein this mrna it contains information for the synthesis of more than one polypeptide chain that is why it is called as polycystronic mrna the half-life of prokaryotic mrna is only from few seconds to few hours it can stay uh, alive or functional for, for only few seconds to few hours averages one to three minutes is its half life let's move to the uh, eukaryotic mrna eukaryotic mrna is also formed by the process of transcription and post transcriptional modifications are needed to produce mature uh, mrna only the mature mrna will uh, function the process of translation proteins are synthesized only from the matured mrna in case of eukaryotes mrna leaves the nucleus all the post transcriptional modifications takes place in the nucleus and after that the mrna enters into the cytoplasm through nuclear pores and in the cytoplasm the mrna is attached to the ribosomes for the proteins to synthesize and this eukaryotic mrna is monocystronic mrna monocystronic mrna means if this is the mrna after the process of translation how many proteins we are going to get only one protein we are going to get that means this contains information for the synthesis of only one protein single polypeptide chain is formed and the half life of this eukaryotic mrna is a is from few minutes to few days it is more stable compared to the prokaryotic mrna because of the presence of this uh, cap tail and the splicing processes there is some stability added stability in case of eukaryotic mrnas see here this is the uh, typical eukaryotic mrna which contains the five prime n as well as the three prime n's are there and uh, to understand this post transcriptional modifications you watch another video on post transcriptional modifications done by me which uh, from which you can understand very well how the capping and uh, polyadenylation and splicing are done here this structure represent here this is the start site and stop site where the proteins are synthesized from here to here this is the coding region from which codes for the polypeptide chain and what is this utr untranslated regions five prime untranslated region as well as three prime untranslated regions five prime untranslated regions are approximately around 70 bases and here around 150 to 170 bases base pairs are present in the three prime untranslated regions they are just before the coding region and after the coding region they are the part of the exon you may have doubt that why they are not cleaved in the process of splicing because they are not introns they are the part of the exons in the mrna but after the uh, mature mrna is formed they have some functions like they lead to the mrna stability and the localization of the mrna is guided by the three prime utrs and the translational efficiency is also maintained by the utrs untranslated regions lead to the translational efficiency that means they have to they will increase the efficiency according number of proteins likewise they may decrease the efficiency of the mrna in the translation process okay friends these are different types of rnas we have seen the trna which is the clover leaf model and three dimensional structure is l shaped structure which carries the amino acids and we also have seen the ribosomes ribosomes contain two subunits the smaller subunit and larger subunit each subunit is part of ribosomal rna and ribosomal proteins and mrna also we have seen the prokaryotic mrna as well as eukaryotic mrna hope you understood very well thanks for watching till the end and you continue to watch other videos 
on this topic and explore Dorka Berry tutorials for more videos. Thank you.